Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. I was recently asked about the question of cult leaders. Do you believe that there are cult leaders in typology? People who are manipulative and controlling and uh, dictatorial in applying type theory? And my sad ass answer is... My sad ass? My sad ass is, uh, yes, there are cult leaders in typology. There are people who are going to be highly manipulative and prone to bullying and using dominant and aggressive techniques to get you to doubt yourself, to get you to feel insecure, and to get you to feel flawed. I've seen people in the typology community that tell you that you are broken, you are weak, you are frail, and you need me. You need my help, you need me to take care of you, to fix you. And I've seen people out there that use typology method methodology to stereotype, to label, and to make people feel less than they are. And I worry, like, there is a serious problem of people out there that use typology as a means to bully other people into submission. They want to force you into a certain type that will make you feel like less than you are, less intellectually capable, less logical, less open to your own opinion, or less self-secure, and less proactive and able to succeed in life. And in doing so, in making you feel less than you are, they want to, of course, get you to depend on them. They will fix this for you. They will help you. They will do it for you. And uh, this is dangerous. Like, this is a dangerous mentality. Type theory should not be used to limit or to make you feel weak. Type theory should be used to open up your potential to show you new opportunities and how to succeed in life. And typology leaders that focus on stereotyping, quick and easy labeling, and techniques to portray your personality type as less special, as weaker, or as broken in some regard, only do it for their own profit and for their own comfort and security. They are trying to build themselves up and to raise you down. And there are people there are people out there that only want power and that are obsessed with power. And it should be said, like, these people typically believe they're doing something good. They believe they have some special ability or some special power that nobody else has. They feel misunderstood or not accepted for their gifts. They feel like they need to use power to legitimize their own thoughts and theories, to get other people to accept their beliefs. And they believe that... In getting people to accept their beliefs and to follow their teachings, they will help people and do good. They believe that because their methods are superior, even if they can't be verified by science, even if they can't be verified through logical reasoning, it will do good. It's self-rationalizing. It's, it's the case that they believe that their methods and the things they do will be accepted, that it is a means to an end. Cult leaders are going to be, are going to depend on making you doubt yourself. And uh, I want you to think, and I want you to think for yourself, is this person making me doubt myself? Is this person making me afraid of doubting myself or of asking questions? Do I feel comfortable questioning or critiquing this person? Do I feel welcome in offering alternative ideas or suggestions? Do I feel comfortable in entertaining new possibilities? Because a lot of type theory hinges on hiding questions and flaws. Hiding anything that suggests that you are not the type that they think you are. Anything that goes against what people... Uh, what people think your type should be. There are people out there that will rationalize anything that exists outside your type spectrum by saying, well, that's because you are, and finding some kind of way to say that you are that type anyways. And uh, this is a dangerous practice, so, ra rationalizing the incorrect, rationalizing falsehoods. I think we're all good at doing that sometimes. We will look at contradictions and signs that we are mistyped and we will dismiss them because um, and then we will invent the reason why it's a legitimate legitimate error 
when what we should be doing is we should be asking ourselves, we should be getting to, to the bottom of whether we feel good about our personality type. Whether we feel like this personality type helps us become healthy and happy, whether this personality type helps us make decisions and move forward in life, whether this personality type helps us identify our hobbies and what we love and what we find meaningful, and if this personality type fits with what we feel is right and wrong. If you encounter a, per a cult leader like person or a person that makes you feel insecure about yourself, I would say be careful in how you engage this person. If you feel to some extent that you do feel broken or insecure of yourself, proceed with caution. Because the critique and the things that you might deliver to this person can easily be turned against you. The person can be good at making you feel guilty for what you said and for what you did. They will find something wrong with what you said. They will make you doubt yourself. They will make you question yourself. And if you are not confident in yourself, securing yourself and who you are, that can be dangerous. If you find a cult leader, seek rather the help of other people around you. Ask them questions. Find other people around you that can have might have had experiences with this person. Ask them who they who they are, what they're like, find out a little more about them and about how they've engaged with other people. Find allies and people that can support you if you are bullied or if you are attacked by a cult leader or by their followers. Find perhaps a support group, a small group of people outside a group that have shared your experiences or that have had, a dif have had difficulties in similar ways. And trust your gut if you have a bad feeling about a person or a about a situation. If you feel uncomfortable in a group or in a group environment, find another group. You don't have to find that group. You don't have to be in that group. There are tons of groups everywhere out there. And find groups that support you, that uh, encourage you, that drive you forward. Find groups and people that will be your allies rather than your enemies. Find people you can trust and people that have good hearts and pure intentions. Just because a person feels perfect, looks perfect, seems great, doesn't mean they are. If they are charlatans, if they are cult leaders, they will be exceptionally good at hiding their flaws and pretending to be perfect and keeping up this image. And what you need to do to blow up this air castle is simply ask yourself what it is they're hiding. What it is that they're trying to cover up. What makes them uncomfortable. Because there are going to be things that are going to make them uncomfortable. Such as criticism, questions, doubt. And things that put their work and their hard effort into question. And there is the question of helping a cult leader. If you know a person is a cult leader. Because you might empathize with them and you might feel... Oh, it's because they're insecure, or oh, it's because they don't feel safe, or so. Be careful, because just because you can empathize with them does not mean that you have to agree with them. You don't have to play their game, you don't have to go along with their methods, you don't have to pretend you didn't see or hear what they did just because you feel sorry for them. You can still bring up the issues they show, you can still show the flaws that they have, you can still note this and bring up when they do things that aren't right. Just because you empathize with someone does not mean you have to agree with them. That is super important to remember. And I hope this video helped all of you. Perhaps it helped you if you're dealing with some uh, problematic person in some group in typology or in the MTI or in the Enneagram or in some other system of ideas. And I hope it helped encourage and empower you to trust yourself, who you are, what you believe and what you feel is right. I hope this video made you more open-minded in entertaining different possibilities and different ideas, even those that might suggest that you are not the type you think you are, and that you are not as weak or as fragile or as insecure or as broken as other people might make your type out to be.